So to pick up with the rounded box form, we're going to work into the value structure. And the simplest way to do this is wherever there is shadow, you put a tone down. It doesn't really matter what the tone is at first. It, you can add that later. So what you'll see is that I've done one line direction kind of going with the ground and another line direction that doesn't exactly go with the ground. On the side that's in shadow, I'm gonna go ahead and put a tone down on it very loosely. And I don't really care if I'm going over the edges a little bit, I can always fix that. And one of the things about a rounded box is that you kind of have to take care of that rounded corner and make it a little fuzzy. And what I, and you'll notice what I'm doing is that the marks don't go along the edge. They go against that edge. And that allows me to control how soft or sharp that is. You'll notice too that I'm constantly going back and refining the edges and the features of the box. And that's totally okay. And you should be able to go back into the process and refine as much as possible. What I'm doing now is I'm kind of finding the darkest dark within the box and that tends to be right along the ground. And this serves to ground the box, make sure that it's actually sitting on the ground rather than hovering above it. And it allows uh, for a uh, greater degree of flexibility with when you put shadows inside the actual box. And here, I'm putting a little bit of tone and pattern into the light side of the box because it's not a pure white box. It's a sort of galvanized tin uh, metal container. So it does have some value on the light side. And I'm just, now what I'm doing is I'm differentiating the shadow tones. You'll notice that the, sh that the cast shadow tone was exactly the same as the shadow on the box itself. So now what I'm doing is deepening the cast shadow to make it just a little bit darker. I don't care how much darker at this point as long as it is somewhat darker. Now I'm pushing it in that grounding tone to its absolute maximum. And what this does is it, is it anchors the value range. Um, that means I know that I have put my number 10 deepest value in and I know how far I have to go to get the values in between that. And it doesn't take much. It only takes a very small amount of absolute deep value to know where you need to go in the next stages. And you'll notice that with a bare minimum of three values and a different value on each plane that I've created a fully dimensional object. And that's really all that's required of structural drawing is exploring an object in all its dimension. 